Hey everyone, and welcome to part 2 of Let's Clone a Pokemon Game. Now, I kind of went back and forth on how I wanted to actually set up the grid system itself. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can go about doing this. For different games, you could do something like create an array of ints, and then do a for loop and instantiate an object depending on what number that is, and then that would lay out a grid. Um, for this, for the Pokemon games and other larger scale RPGs, um, they set it up in more of like a tile system. So they'd lay out each tile and then assign if it's um, if it has collision or not or what it does. And I figured that would probably be an easier way. Now I did find out that you can use snap settings to get this to uh, or make it so it can be accomplished a lot easier. So for this tutorial we're not going to go into the code and actually lay out the tile system that way. It's going to be way too confusing for people and this way they can easily lay out stuff a lot faster and customize it how they want. So we're just going to go through that route and we can just start setting the stuff up. And in the end, um, so it won't be a traditional like 2D game, but most games in Unity 3D, even if they're in 2D, they're still a 3D game. It's just from a different perspective. So we're just going to set up a couple things for this tutorial and I'll show you guys how to do that. So right now, um, if you followed the last tutorial, we created a plane, and what I did is I threw our grass texture onto there. Now one other thing you want to do to make it look more pixelated, um, originally it'll probably look, I forgot which one it starts on, it'll look really blurry like that. And it's not something we want for a Pokemon game or any traditional um, old school RPG games like this or on the Game Boy. Uh, we want it pixelated. So if you just set that to point and apply, and it should show up just like that, just like the picture pixelated. And so from here, we're going to want to start laying out our grid. Now, one thing you can do is go to Edit and Change Snap Settings. And you can adjust this if you want. Um, I believe you can just leave it at default and it'll be fine. It works fine for me. Snap all axes, close that. And we can start working with this. Now, when, when you lay it down, you just want to leave it at the angle that it's at. And let's see here, I think it's the Y. Yep, it'll take you to the Y, and you can simply move this around like this. So what we're going to do, I don't know how to, if you can like slide the camera back and forth, but I guess we'll just mess with this just to see what we can do. Um, I guess I could zoom out the camera a lot more and do this, um, probably like that. Yeah, if you just uh, scroll out, you can mess with that. Oh. I guess if you click the middle uh, of the scroll wheel, you can move it around. So there we go. I knew there was a different way to do that. <laughs> so just, yeah, scrolling in and holding down the middle mouse wheel. And yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control D, and that'll duplicate our graphs there. And now what you want to do is you want to hold down Control and drag it. And it I don't know if you guys can see it right now, but it's snapping to the grid itself. So we can line it up perfectly, um, just like that. Now if you want to go ahead and grab your other texture, and we'll throw that one on. Uh, this is for our tall grass, and I don't think I changed this one. Point, apply, hit control, or let's see this. We will go and we'll rename this tall grass, and then we'll take our tall grass, control D, hold control, and drag it over. And then we'll lay down our tree. Actually, we probably want to throw our trees up here. So yeah, the whole time you just want to be holding control if you want it to line up like that. And so this one will be our tree. So now that we have all three of these set up, um, I guess we don't really need to instantiate anything. We just need to code it so that it works properly with everything. Um, so what we could do is go ahead and, I might save this for later actually, um, with our box collider, we can actually increase this something like 10, you see how it goes way up. Um, that'll be for our collision. So each box will have its own collision for the tree. So if the player tries, you know, walking off the map, um, it'll run, our player will run into the tree. And that'll be helpful for our movement system as well in detecting where collision is. Um, we can set this a little bit lower. It's not a big deal um, how tall it is, as long as it's a little bit tall. We are going to be lifting our player just a little bit off of the ground so that they're not Sliding with the ground, it doesn't really matter too much because we're going to have a layer where it's the tiles and then we'll have a layer where we have our NPCs and our character. And 
as long as it's um, not taller than this collider, we can collide with it once we start programming our character. So yeah, we just wanted to set that up just so we don't have to go back and change each one again. So these are pretty much our prefab. Um, we'll probably go in and set tags for these as well. Um, oh yeah, that's one other thing. Um, we'll do that for this as well. Let's see here. We'll set this for five and we'll set this to a trigger. So whenever our player walks and enters into this, we're going to check and see if they collided with a, um, or they went into battle with the Pokemon. So this is going to be a trigger because we can walk through this, but we just want to tell, you know, if we hit the grass or not. Now there's a couple of different ways that we could do this. Um, I'm just thinking real quick. Yeah, that might be too many triggers. You know what? We, let's see here real quick. We're just going to leave this as as it was before. Maybe we can put it up one just so it has some or something small, 0.2. All right, we're just going to use a tag system because I just did a little bit of thinking and it's probably a lot easier to do a downwards raycast to check if if that um, is grass or not. Because I remember in the past I've worked with a lot of triggers and it causes a lot of leg issues associated with that. And so we're just going to do it this way. So if you haven't set up a tag system before, um, this is an easy way to check if um, the raycast collided with a certain object and you can do different raycasts at certain times. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our player in the center of one of these tiles and when they move and they reach the center of that one we're going to do a downwards raycast just once and we'll check if um, that is grass or not. So we're not calling battles until we get to the center but that's just gonna, how it's going to work. So we'll set this for five, and for right now, yes, we'll just do tall grass. And that's the only tag we're going to use for now. So we'll click on this, set this for tall grass, and yep, that should be all we need for now. So we can do control D, hold control, and start laying this out a little bit more if we want. And you guys can kind of see how you guys should be setting this up if you want to follow along this way. Um, there's plenty of other ways to do this like I explained before, but for this tutorial um, I think this is the easiest method to go about doing things. Just so we don't have a lot of complex scripts involved in this. So you guys can play around with setting up your tiles until the next tutorial. go and place that and to make things go faster if you want um, let's see here you can hold shift and select all these do control D and hold control and you can drag multiples at once and we could highlight all these control D hit hold control and we can move all these over so it's a lot faster than just doing one at a time and you can lay out a lot of tiles very fast and so we'll jump back into perspective and we'll see how this looks and that looks pretty good so far I think I'm just gonna save this real quick don't want Unity to crash um, yeah another thing you can do to stay a little bit more organized I'll show you guys this um, go into create empty and we'll name this um, area one because we're going to have a lot of areas in this game you're going to have a giant world so you want to keep this stuff kind of organized another thing you can do go right here click and make it a color that kind of pops out let's make it red see how it's red we can select it in game what we're going to do is we're going to go highlight all of this all of our tiles except our camera and we're going to drag and drop it onto there now that looks a lot cleaner and a lot more organized so if and you can see everything that's highlighted too. Um, if you just drag and drop down the area, you can go in and start editing again. Now, so when we start laying out the each area, it's going to be a certain amount of tiles, um, like length and width wise. And from there, we can go and create a second area and put it over here. And another thing that this is good for is if we're not in range of this area or if we don't see it, um, we can just completely disable everything in it just by 
turning it off just like that and we can set that up later in another system uh, one more thing I'm gonna do before we stop this tutorial is grab this camera wherever it went and we're gonna drag it over here to our tiles now we want to set this up a certain way now for our rotation let's see what way this rotates yep we're gonna it's either yep 90 we'll grab this hopefully we can get this lined up oh that's another thing that we have to do real quick well it depends on what what kind of game you're making but for this game um, we're not gonna have any lighting in it or anything special like that right now it's set to diffuse you can do unlit texture which makes it a little bright. Um, Self-illuminated diffuse is more bright. Um, I think we just want a unlit diffuse. Ah. Unlit. Okay. Let's see. Or actually, we could just... Let's see how this looks in-game currently. Oh, yeah, it's way darker than what we want. I just thought that was a little too bright. Um, okay, with self-illuminated, you can turn it down to what you want. So, let's see. We'll do a gray. And so we'll do that for each one. Let's see. All of them are going to change, too, when you adjust this texture. Self-illuminated diffuse. We'll try getting this close, but it's not a big deal if it's not. And then we just want to go change our tree real quick. So now when we jump in game, you can see that it's a little bit better. Um, my monitor, res or my uh, brightness on my monitor is set really low, so it might be brighter for other people when you're viewing this video. But I can always go and put a setting in there to adjust that accordingly. There's a couple other settings that you can do for that. Um, but for now it looks pretty good. Um, close that off real quick. Go to our main camera. And now, right now it's in more of a 3D view. So that's something we don't want, not for a traditional top-down game. Um, we don't want to see any type of 3D angles or anything like that. So with this, if you had characters like over here or something, you'd be able to see like it kind of from the side if that makes any sense. So we just want to change this from perspective to orthographic. And this will do a simple top down. Um, I guess I can put in a box here real quick. Just so I can show you guys what I'm talking about exactly. So we'll go, let's place this. Place this at the edge here. And we'll push play. Now this is orthographic, so it's a very sharp box because it's looking straight down. Now if we go to our camera again, change it to perspective, you see that now we see the angle of the box. It's more 3D. So for a 2D top-down game, we definitely want, want it orthographic. So everything is displayed downwards and you're not going to see the side of anything. And that's about it. So hopefully you guys set something cool up. And until next time, we will continue the tutorial. And we'll start getting the movement in there for the character and other functions like that. So stay tuned.